We're joined by Jenna from Penn State. Now it's time to look at how much spray we're using. We saw a moment ago that backing the air off was the right thing to do. We didn't have quite so much blow through, but it was still obvious that there was a lot of spray. And the way to figure out how much spray you're using and where it's going is using water sensitive paper, which Jenna's going to help me set up. So here's water sensitive paper. It's yellow on one side and white on the other. It's the yellow side that's coated with a substance that goes from yellow to blue when it's sprayed. And when it's put in the right places, it can show you where your spray is going or where it's not going. Now, we're in raspberry, and uh, a pest of significant concern is spotted wing drosophila. So we want to take the card, and right on the back, we'll say trial one, position one. And we've already decided ahead of time that in the center of the canopy, in the top, will be position one. And then down deep at the bottom of the canopy will be position two. And if you're doing this, you might use a typical black springback paperclip. But uh, since I do this for a living, I had all kinds of toys made up. And I use these alligator clips. They're much easier to use. Whoops. So I'll give that to Jenna. She's going to use flagging tape inside the crop to mark where these tapes are, where these papers go. And the reason we do that is even though they're brightly colored, it's just so easy to lose them. So after we've done this spray application, we'll also have the position mark so we can put new cards in and see if we've done good or bad with our spray calibration. So go ahead and set those up in the top position. And I'll get two more ready for the bottom position. Trial one, position two. You'll notice I'm clipping two back to back, like this. That's so they're both facing the sprayer, one on the left and one on the right, because you're not going to alternate row spray. You're going to go both rows. If the paper is totally drenched, turns blue, curls up, you have way too much spray. Ideally, we're looking for about 85 drops per square centimeter, which you do count, and 15 to 20 percent, or 10 to 15 percent even, coverage for most insecticides and fungicides. That's more than sufficient. So that was three tips at about 200 PSI, which is high, and they were putting out about 1.8, 1.9 gallons per minute, which we know to be a lot. So Jenna's going to retrieve those cards, which she's set up facing the sprayer on each side with spring back paper clips. And as you can see, that is beyond excessive. Where we would be looking for a nice speckled pattern, again about 10 to 15 percent coverage, 85 drops per square centimeter, what we're left with is a totally blue card. And that's beyond excessive. If we were doing an apple tree and we were doing a dormant oil or some other drench, great, but not for a foliar application. So Jenna's just going to retrieve the top card now. And we can see that once again it's drenched. The wind was blowing in this direction. And you can see that even blowing back against the wind, uh, it's very wet. There's a bit of yellow here in the corner. That's leaf shadowing. What happened is the leaf probably got blown up over the card momentarily and it protected it. There's still a lot of coverage behind it. However, when we turn the card, that's uh, a little less volume than we might like to see, but the distribution of droplets is really good. If you're ever curious, you just have to imagine what are the odds that an insect could be on this card and not be hit by a droplet, uh, slim to none in this case. But why isn't it drenched? This is one of the flukes with water-sensitive paper. It's not a perfect system. Spraying something like a dye or a kale and clay might be more effective, but this is a much faster and easier method. So that's why we wouldn't rely on just one set of cards. We would actually do this three times in the raspberries, three different locations, because these wild cards do crop up on occasion. In this case, it's just a fluke. There could have been a gust of wind or something unusual happened. We shouldn't focus too much on this. It's these three drench cards that have my attention. Again, if we had repeated this a few times, this would just be an anomaly. We need to lower the output that that sprayer is spraying. So now we've backed the sprayer off uh, for its fan speed. We've calibrated the direction of the spray, and we've backed the volume off. We went from about 1.9 or so gallons per minute down to about 0.65, which doesn't seem like a lot, but the cards will do the talking. Let's pull the bottom ones out. Still very blue, but there's a lot of yellow showing between them, and honestly, at some point, you have to know when enough is enough. 
we we're starting to see yellow shine through and, and that's excellent. There's still tons of coverage there. On the other side, we're still drenching. But when you look at where the card was placed in the canopy, it's a pretty wide open spot. It's, it's easy to hit. Uh, this is another reason we like to do this in three or maybe even four locations along the plants, not just in one. Let's pull the top one out. Excellent. So that's more what we're looking for. That's, that's great coverage in an apple tree, in, in blueberries, and raspberries. If you can manage that in at least this, in those locations, you're doing well. But when we turn it around, we see got a bit of a fail here. Uh, we've looked at this, and it seems that this card was pressed right up against a cane, and it was blocking the card from getting sprayed. But that's reality. That's that's what's going to happen when you set these targets up. It's not dye, it's not kale and clay. They have their failings. Uh, and again, I say that's why we put them in multiple locations, not just one. But when you look at the other cards, we really do have sufficient, even excessive in some places. This anomaly will generally take care of itself. It's not as if we missed it completely. There's still a lot of spray there. It's just not as showy as the other cards. Uh, so if we were to do this a couple of times, and it is getting a little windy out in, in uh, better weather conditions, I'd be pretty comfortable that this is going to give you going to give you excellent control as long as your timing and product choice are okay.